Welcome to Bike Week Radio Show. Powered by Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Waldridge, Brock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the Mighty 1090. Good morning and welcome into Bike Week Radio Show on San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. Thank you again for making us part of your Sunday morning routine. For those listening here on the Mighty 1090, and special shout out and congrats to those listening on that handy dandy Mighty 1090 Bike Week Radio Show smartphone app. Oh, where, that app. Ooh, that app. It's so good. Uh, once again, Phil Cotner, his baby, his brainchild, and all sorts of fun stuff on that smartphone app. So if you haven't downloaded it yet, Get on it. Hey, there's a fresh update, too. And when you uh, download the update, it gives you a nice picture of our Bike Week Radio Show logos. Logo? Well, there, are, you lo- say? there are logos in the, in the frame, but uh, it's got our Bike Week Radio Show uh, girls. Ooh. Oh. And that's what you see while the thing's downloading. You don't see a little progress bar. You don't see a little windy clock or a beach ball. I didn't even know we had girls. Well, you met them when you were at... Uh, Lake Elsinore. That's a, that's a brilliant. I've got, I've got several photos of you with them. <laughs> Great. <laughs> brilliant marketing move by Scott Cox. Instead of putting a picture of one of our ugly mugs, we put those lovely Bike Week Radio Show ladies. Paul Carruthers here in studio. Good to have you, buddy. Nice to be here. Happy birthday to you, my son. Oh. 29 years young. Thank you very much. And uh, also, while we're, we're, we're shooting out, congrats. I got a special shout out to Vera, who is an avid Bike Week Radio Show listener. And we love follower. Vera. And uh, she shot me multiple uh, birthday did. messages yes, on Twitter and on Facebook and through Bike Week Radio Show. So thank you, Vera. Always appreciate the the, uh, the love. She's one of our Bike Week Radio Show girls, too. So mm-hmm. and, thank uh, you, Vera. Scott Cox in studio once again, plugging that Bike Week Radio Show Facebook page. Good to have you back. I love being here, especially our friend and my longtime uh, adventure companion, Corey Eastman, is here to talk about uh, – some of the ad- adventure riding rallies he's putting on this year, and um, the hot bike tour, and a bunch of other stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be a fun segment of the show. Great, Great. thanks for having me, guys. Good to be here. And uh, Corey already making us laugh in the uh, in the green room back there, yucking it up for an hour. Belly laughs, it, it, indeed. And so, uh, it, it's great to have Corey on. And uh, also, a uh, good day for uh, a phone call if you want to talk to us, 877-792-1090 or 858-457-1090. Or, of course, you can submit your questions via the Bike Week Radio Show Facebook page. But let's just jump into the news with the one and only Paul Carruthers. Nobody knows the news better than Bike Week Radio Show. This was an age when only men were allowed to read the news. And only Bike Week Radio Show has Paul Carruthers. See, I'm here. Uh, we can do the news now. It's all right, everyone. We can, we can do the news. Hold on. Everyone, why are we all standing around? Let's go. Well, I'm a little giddy this morning. We, uh... I don't, I don't know if it's giddy or if it's just the donuts that uh, that Scott brought in for uh, that was for, a cake. For Bobby's birthday. They looked like donuts, but that was Bobby's I birthday. I think the last cake. time I had a donut was probably from you a year ago, maybe. Yeah, close to Bobby's birthday. Oh, boy. <laughs> Anyhow, we get to start MotoGP today, which is uh, always an exciting time. I've got my parents coming up. It's a big Carruthers Day of. Uh, Watching the first MotoGP of the year, so Hell yes! we've been uh, we've been paying attention to uh, to things like qualifying, and uh, a Ducati is on pole position. Think of that! I'm sure they're thinking about. It. I bet there's a lot of partying going on in. Uh, oh, Bologna they were. Right uh, now. You could tell yesterday after uh, after that qualifying session when they earned pole position. I mean, they were yeah, there were hugs all around. I mean, that you know that those teams are pretty big, and now there's uh, you know there's at least two Ducati teams, and they all qualified well, and uh, all those crew guys were just you know losing their minds. Oh, they were losing their minds. If they if they could win today, it would. Uh, It'd be a pretty special, pretty special deal for uh, for them and for the series. Um, Andrea Dovizioso put the new Ducati GP15 on pole for today's MotoGP, and they are in Qatar. Uh, if you're out in California, that race is set to start at uh, at 11 a.m. Part of our conversation in the back room before was figuring out 
what channel and how to get our DVR. Hey, we gave you we gave you detailed schematics on how to pull it off of your laptop. Yeah, and play gonna, it on your seventy inch screen in yeah. the uh, Carruthers front room. Yeah, so we're gonna have to see if I can, uh, or actually, I'll see if my daughter can make that. And what's work. cooler than anybody else, any of our homes, anyway? Paul's gonna watch it with Kel Carruthers. I mean, how good is that? Yeah, and and I'm I guess I'm a little spoiled because I was watching qualifying. We 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 were at the office this week, and and Wayne was there. The and Moto we, America office. At the Moto America about. office, and uh, and we had qualifying up on our big screen, you know, through the laptop, the way you were just explaining that I need to do it at home. And uh, so I watched qualifying with Wayne Rainey. So, yeah, I'm, I, I yeah. get to watch the uh, qualifying and the race with, well, uh, with it, world guys, champions. Huh? I'm, uh, I'll see you out in the parking lot. Not I'm, to I, drop I was, names or anything. No, but, uh, of course not. We wouldn't do that. But it, it, it's really fun watching the stuff with him because – you know he he's constantly telling you stories and and he also you know he's 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 acutely aware of more things that are going on than than yeah. my eyes going to catch but uh anyhow it was it, it, the the ducatis and the ducati ended up beating both the factory honda hondas of danny pedrosa and mark marquez um but again we have to remember that qualifying's qualifying and racing's racing and so far over the past couple of seasons uh mark marquez has proven that uh he's pretty difficult to beat when it comes time for the race this morning's warm-up uh, had Marquez on top over Valentino Rossi. Now, Rossi, I think, qualified in seventh or eighth. I mean, he was pre- pretty far down, and his teammate was uh, fifth or sixth, Jorge Lorenzo. So the Yamahas, so far, haven't had a very good time of it there. But if we remember back to last year, uh, Rossi was the one who battled with Marquez basically for the entire event. So maybe the warm-up session, maybe they found something, but it looks like he's, uh, he's found some speed that will, uh, will help him in the race. Uh, also... Uh, Dovioso was uh, was third today in the warm up, um, and the the thing that's kind of cool is is the top fourteen have qualified, the top sixteen qualified within a second, and this morning's warm up there's fourteen of them on the same second. So again, that's qualifying's like, qualifying, and, like and the race is the race. But it looks like uh, it looks like MotoGP will be off to a good start. American Nikki Hayden, who's uh, obviously the only American in the field, he's going to start seventeenth. Uh, but again, only really a second and a half off the the leader's pace. So we shall see what happened happens. Uh, Supercross um, at this point in the season's a little more predictable. Ryan Dungey won a sixth Supercross of the season last night in St. Louis, uh, and it was the fourth time this year that the KTM team has swept both races with Marvin Moosecan winning the uh, the two fifty race. So. Uh, much like Ducati's hoping to do today, KTM continues to uh, to get to to celebrate uh, incredible team success, which is which is nice to see. Um, Roger DeCosta and those guys have obviously worked hard, and they've we've talked about this before. That it's nice seeing Roger smile after a race. You know, there he was on yeah, uh, and he's he's on uh, TV last night, grinning ear to ear, and yeah, he's uh, he's got a lot to uh, to grin about. Those two guys are. Uh, well on their way to winning the title. I mean, Dungy's points lead at this point is massive. Um, and you almost consider it done. Well, I think, I, think he can, uh, I think he can wrap it up with the next one. I think so. Yes. Houston, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of the luster gets rubbed off the Supercross series at this point, you know, during the year. I hate to say every year, but we, we always have – we always have uh, – you know some injuries that take some guys out, like Ken Roxon. I think he's. I saw last night on the TV coverage that they're hoping he comes back back soon. But it's this time of the year where you start to miss those injured guys, the Trey Canards, uh, Roxon, and then you know it's also a time of the year when you really miss somebody like a James Stewart because you know that things just start to get a little thin. And and Dungey's having it all his way. I think Tomac's still capable of winning races as he showed last week. But uh, yeah, it would just be nice to have you know. Unfortunately, in motorcycle racing, injuries are a big part of it. But it'd be nice to have a full field. But Supercross season, usually around this point, um, you know, you've lost some guys, and it it tends to uh, lose a little bit, a little bit of its luster. But uh, there's plenty of guys that can still step up and and give Dungey a run for his money. But he's obviously going to cruise in for a for a championship. We've also got the Argentinian Motocross Grand Prix, which um, the first moto is probably underway. Uh, Ryan Villapoto ended up second in the qualifying race, and he was fourth in the morning warm-up. He's got his buddy Casey Stoner there, who's the former MotoGP world champion. Um, those two guys obviously hit it off when they I met last year. And you think they talked late into the night, and they shared a room and uh, talked about I don't know. life and 
I don't know, but Casey Stoner has announced that he's going to come out of retirement and race in the Suzuka 8-hour this July. Um, he's going to ride a factory Honda. Uh, so that's that. That's going to be interesting. I mean, that obviously adds huge interest to uh, to that race, which is already the uh, the biggest. So how many teams race. typically for eight, for the 8-hour? Uh, I don't know. They used to have huge amounts because back in the day they had, uh, you know, a lot of the MotoGP guys – uh, would race in that event, like Yamaha would get their yeah. best guys, Honda would get their best guys, and that's kind of it lost was a big a, deal. Yeah, it, it's lost a bit of that. Uh, part of the problem is now you don't necessarily want to take your MotoGP guy on a weekend off and put him in that race because you know there's some danger that he could you know hurt himself and and like would you put Mark Marquez Marquez in that race? You'd have to be crazy if you're a Honda to do that. That'd be so. like that almost be as crazy as putting him on the uh, on a short track with uh, <laughs> right. Brad Baker or well, Jared Meese. <laughs> no, I and and it surprises that'd be crazy. Nobody ever do that. It oh, surprises oh, it me. <laughs> it surprises me that they they actually allow that. You know, so Corey's elbowing me. Uh, they do that like every year. Yeah, they do. Yeah. But so any, anyway, that having Stoner at the eight hour is going to be uh, – that'll be big. I mean, he'll dominate the news on that no matter how he does. Um, we saw earlier this year the, the attention that uh, that Troy Bayless brought to the World Superbike Series when he came back. And, yeah. and Casey Stoner is obviously uh, it's still a bigger name than probably Bayless. You know, I got a kick out of that when Bayless came back out a few weeks ago and, and got back on a bike. And, and all the – Certainly, tons of supporters, myself included. Like, how great is that? But all the other people that are on the sidelines, what's he doing? Look, he, you know, he's only running tenth. It's like, how many guys that are career, you know, in their prime would say, yeah, the guys like, you know, eight. I'm hoping to close out my career and score a couple of tenths. Right, he's like 800 years old. Yeah, he hasn't ridden, raced in seven years, and he right. comes back and he finishes in the top ten. Yeah. I'd be more embarrassed if it was I'd- probably just. And let's face it. It was probably just a bet in a in a pub one night. Well, goes, and oh, I, you couldn't do it. Oh yeah, I'm doing I think it next weekend. I think that's the beauty of him is that As he, he crushed his cigarette, finished his last beer, and said, "I'll see you at the track." Right, and he's weekend. one of those motorcycle racers that really loves ra- riding motorcycles. I would think so. And you know, you see a lot of these guys, and and as soon as they can retire, they do, and they go away, and you never hear from them again. But I mean, he's he's always been active riding motorcycles, and. And and he came out for all the right reasons. He he just wanted to have some fun, and I think he's had his fun. He's got to do two rounds. I don't think he's going to be doing any more. It's like when Bobby came out for all the right. Oh, sorry, <laughs> poor Bobby. I've got to finish the news with uh, with some sad news. Actually, um, Moto America uh, road racer Dane Westby passed away on Monday night uh, after a street bike accident near his home in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, Westby was one of the, the the bright stars of of the Moto America series. He was he he was an AMA racer uh, in previous years. Uh, he was the fourth fastest um, sup, uh, rider overall at our, at our Coda test. Um, you know, the week before his passing, uh, he was the fastest super stock rider, fourth overall when when combined with the super bikes. I mean, I think he was really looking towards having that kind of breakout season. Uh, he obviously had adapted to the big bike well. Uh, really nice guy, great family, family owned team. Uh, it's just, you know, it, it was just horrible news when we, when we heard that on, on Sunday night or Monday and, and, uh, he, he's going to be missed. It's, it's, you know, it's the part of our business that, that nobody likes and True. it's, uh, it's sad. I, we, we keep hearing stories that, that the team might continue in his honor and, and put somebody else on the bike. And there's obviously a lot of good motorcycle riders that don't, the road racers that don't have jobs. So I think it would be fairly easy to find somebody that could carry that torch. And, and I hope they do. I mean, that the, the, the teams, the team was so excited at our test. They did really well. And they're just a great bunch of, uh, a great bunch of guys. And if they can continue, I think that would be, uh, it would be awesome. So yeah, agreed. And there's uh, one more bit of sad news. We, we yeah, our friend uh, Mike Owens died a week ago last night. Um, he was, you know, managed the West Coast activities for the Legends and Heroes Tour. That uh, you know, it's a group that we've been involved with for a few years here and support their efforts. And Brock is certainly very involved on a weekly basis, uh, presenting. Um, Legends Awards to various and sundry. Last night in St. Louis at the Supercross, uh, Brock presented an award to um, Jeff Emig, who's the announcer of Supercross and, and um, many-time champion and, and big fixture in our sport. But Mike Owens, he was uh, kind of he's not unlike so many of our listeners and, and, and myself included. I mean, just a working guy, loves motorcycles and loves racing. And um, Mike. 
put his heart and soul into uh, the efforts of the Legends and Heroes Tour. So, um, you know, big loss for our community. And, um, you and know, always just so generous with yeah, his time and helping guy. Bike Week yeah. Radio Show and partnering with us. I mean, yeah, we were just out at uh, – in Escondido, at Toyota Escondido, with him for uh, for the pre San Diego Supercross event, and he helped us tremendously at San Diego Supercross, and uh, he will be sorely missed by not only Bike Week Radio Show and and you know our whole uh, uh, group of motocross and supercross fans, but uh, you know the world was a better place with a guy like Mike Owens. And so uh, with, with that, you know, hug your loved ones. Life's short, you know. Make make it count and. Uh... We'll be back with uh, more Bike Week Radio Show coming back right here. San Diego Sports Leader, Mighty 1090. The negotiation begins the minute you walk in the door, Frank. Jerry, I'm going to Toyota Carlsbad for my new Toyota. I don't have to worry about no, it. brother, walk in with that attitude. You're dead meat. Yeah, I don't think that's First the thing when you walk in, what? walk out. Jerry, You what? come back the next day, just walk right in, walk right out. <sighs> look, come back a week later, look him right in the eye and say... I'd like to buy a car. No, walk out. Jerry, does this explain why you don't own a car? You made me forget, was I in or out? You're out. This spring, hop in and save on a huge selection of new and used Toyotas. Toyota Carlsbad. Here's an idea. Bear with me. You could save quite a bit of money just by switching your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. Piles of it, in fact. But there may not be a lot of room on your bike for all that extra cash. So I had somewhat of an idea. You could get one of those nifty little sidecars, pile it up with all that money you've just saved, and merrily drive on your way. It's just a thought. Just off the top of my head. Call GEICO today for a free motorcycle rate quote. GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are the real deal. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Their entire practice is dedicated to representing motorcyclists. As riders themselves, they understand why you ride, the issues you face, and the motorcycle culture. For over 30 years, Russ Brown and his partner Chuck Coro have been helping injured motorcyclists and their families get the care and compensation they deserve. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys also created BAM. BAM. A nationwide buddy system of over 2 million riders helping riders in the event of a roadside emergency. BAM offers free legal advice, and thanks to Russ Brown, they have staff on hand to take your call 24-7, 365 days a year. Imagine a real person answering the phone 24-7. Just call 1-800-4-BIKERS for more information and to get your BAM card today. If you go down, call Russ Brown, 1-800-4-BIKERS, and online at russbrown.com. Hi, James here from Toyota Escondido. Guys, if you're hearing this commercial, that means you are into powerful machines that go fast and are durable. Toyota Escondido has the biggest selection in San Diego of Toyota Tacomas and Toyota Tundras. Whether for work or play, we can customize the truck of your choice into the truck of your dreams. Don't waste time anywhere else. Stop by or give us a call. Toyota Escondido. Freeway close where Highway 78 meets Broadway, just east of the 15. This is Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Woldridge, Rock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back, Bike Week Radio Show, San Diego sports leader, mighty 1090, Paul Carruthers in studio, Scott Cox in studio. I'm Brock, here. Flying somewhere over the Midwest as we speak, and we'll catch up with Brock one of these days. Don't you worry. We haven't forgot about our old buddy Brock Glover, and he makes sure we don't forget about him either throughout the, the week. Who could forget? Yeah, you know, the old yeah. Brockster. Yeah, Corey, what were you commenting? Uh, I, I, just only, a I ago? only came to see Brock. I, <laughs> I, I brought my infant child to have him sign its head. <laughs> <laughs> well, just uh, uh, Corey Eastman in studio, uh, a, a second time guest at least on Bike Week at Radio. At least. Years. Second, third, fourth. I can't even keep track, but. Uh, I think he's been here more than Brock. <laughs> well, his essence has been. <laughs> Well, uh, Corey and can sign his own head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Bike Week. That's how we. Uh, that's how we welcome you. Just, just pile right. on immediately, Corey. It's like a warm, filthy blanket. <laughs> I think. I think my third donut just kicked in. <laughs> is, is that what they said? Hey, uh, Corey, why don't you come in studio? Uh, Brock Love will be there. Ank, not here. <laughs> and then uh, we'll just make fun of you for thirty minutes. And by the way, <laughs> guys, unbelievable the we, mentality. <laughs> we are not leaving the studio until the donuts are yeah. complete. Yeah, then we're not leaving. That, that's not going to happen. But uh, Corey, director of consumer events with uh, now this is French. I, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. Bonnier, bon, Bonnier. That, that's close enough. Bonnier, Bonnier. I mean, ugh. since it's a Swedish name, Swedish, Swedish, Swedish French. It's all the this same. This is average. French. Not it's all, American. It's all Greek. It's me. all foreign. But uh, 
and, and you guys put on all kinds of events. You guys have your hands in all sorts of things, and so just go ahead and list them right now. Sure, sure. Uh, Bonnier, Bonnier Motorcycle Group uh, consists of Cycle World, Motorcyclist, Sport Rider, Dirt Rider. Uh, we have a V-Twin group, which includes uh, Hot Bike Magazine, Baggers Magazine, Street Chopper. Uh, we also have some uh, ATV and UTV properties. Um, so we, we have a lot of, of media things that we do. Um, we're also very involved with uh, Moto America. Uh, we're their media partner on, on that front as well. Um, so, yeah, ac- across motorcycling, we do a lot of media things. Um, my element is, is more the consumer engagement side. Um, I sort of try and bring things to life and give folks a reason to go out and use their motorcycle. So we produce uh, multiple events. We do some things with existing events, like the Quail Motorcycle Gathering. We do a tour there with the Cycle World brand. Uh, and we also do some ground-up things, like our Hot Bike Tour, uh, which happens this September, going from uh, Iowa to uh, Montana. And then our Adventure Rally Series, currently one's in Gunnison, Colorado in July, and one's in uh, the Sierras in September. Uh, but all, all designed to, uh, again, give folks a reason to get out and ride. Very cool. And, and you've had a relationship with uh, Scott Cox. He used to be former Husk Barney We agreed guy. we weren't going to talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 say, that was sealed, back, I, I believe. Yeah, I, I do right. go way back. I'm, I'm very old. Thank you. <laughs> um, Keska say restraining order? <laughs> I've been around the industry for quite a while. Uh, I've uh, worked for companies uh, such as White Brothers, which was a performance distributor years back. Uh, I worked for the Motorcycle Industry Council. I was at Cycle World for a number of years. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I had the pleasure of running marketing for uh, Husqvarna for three years when it was owned by BMW. Uh, and Scott Cox and his group was actually my, uh, my agency at the time. We were there. And you still and you still talk to Scott. That's the impressive part. We're like part. this. Uh, we're, we, <laughs> this is me over here. <laughs> we, we 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 had a we had a good time. Uh, we did some pretty amazing things. Had a we lot did. of fun. Uh, we even rode more, didn't we? We we, we rode a ton. Uh, we got to uh, we got to work with incredible journalists. Though I don't think Paul ever showed up to any of our intros. Well, that would have ruined the incredible part. He always he he always, <laughs> he always sent somebody. Um, but no, it, that that was a really fun experience. Being on the OE side, uh, being involved with product planning. Uh, all those different elements is really just a pretty fascinating part and was a, was cool to get to kind of round my career out on that side. Very cool. And, you know, prior to that, I've known Corey now for more than 15 probably, maybe not as many as 20, but uh, he does put on incredible events. You know, he, he touched on the Cycle World treks, and, you know, within the industry, they're legendary. Paul, I don't know if you ever came to a Cycle World. Well, no, because when you work for another magazine, it, you, you don't get invited. Magazine, but, but you know what? You know Next what? He would have invited year. you had you uh, asked. I always had Paul on the list, and it was always nixed by someone higher than me. So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that bastard. And then that person <laughs> got nixed. <laughs> <And then, laughs> but uh, he puts on oh, great events. Bad... <laughs> he's, he's... Uh, I mean, we toe the line around here with, with Paul Crothers. He's the reason the eight-second delay exists. But <laughs> True. That one got through. But Corey, you know, one of the things I love about him is he is super passionate, and he's just – through and through, he's a motorcycle guy, and um, that's really what Bike Week Radio Show is all about. The only reason we're here is because we like motorcycles, we like people like Corey, and and we like donuts, and we <laughs> love donuts. And guys, uh, you need to start working on your third donut. Uh-huh. But um, yo, you know, yo, <laughs> I wanted him here today to talk about something that I hope to uh, participate in on a couple of levels, and it's your adventure rider rally series and also the hot bike tour, which sure. I learned more and more about last time we were in your office. Sure. Well, you know, the, the adventure segment uh, of motorcycles is um, is something that uh, has been around for, for a long time. It, it seemed like it took a while to, to catch fire. I mean, even back in the late 80s, you had things like Trans Alps and, and uh, I guess, early 80s, um, Trans Alps and GSs and, and that sort of thing. Um, and these bikes have really kind of come into their own, finally, uh, from a market standpoint, you see that category up in sales as much as 30%. Um, from a manufacturer standpoint, you see multiple uh, new entrants coming into the marketplace. Um, everything from a, from a new 250 Dual Sport uh, to, to 1200s to what the, the BMW, uh, the new XR with the, uh, I mean, that's certainly on the, on the, the high end of, of, the, uh, of the adventure segment. But um, both manufacturers and enthusiasts are really starting to understand that that style motorcycle um, good power, nice chassis, long travel, um, all that sort of stuff is more and more popular. What we saw um, from our side was that when it comes to actually using those bikes off-road and, and learning to go do things with them, it, it's hard to set that up on your own. And so we wanted to create something that sort of took all the work out for the enthusiast, um, a- allowed them to come participate in an event where they didn't have to worry about where do I ride this, is there enough pavement, is there enough dirt, is the dirt hard enough, is the dirt easy enough. We've, we've answered all those questions for you, and it's very, very turnkey. You show up. Um, you bring your adventure bike. You uh, you need to ride with a buddy. We have a team system set up, um, and we basically in Gunnison, Colorado, and in 
Lakeshore, California, which is outside of Fresno up in the Sierras. Uh, we have base locations. From there, we've got about 80 points that you navigate to off of a custom Butler map and a, a cool clue book. Um, and you basically just follow those those. Is that points. a sponsor plug? Just, just clue, clue book? We no. like We like stuff that... Butler Maps. I, Butler Maps. Well, actually, uh, actually, dig- Butler Maps is a is a uh, wonderful uh, partner of ours, not, not we, just we, a sponsor. And we dig Butler Maps, and right. and they are amazing. And then uh, then your your friend Ned is actually uh, who helps Ned us Cease, with- and yep. also a, a guest here on Bike Week Radio Show. Absolutely, Double Take Mirrors. Ned is actually responsible for all of our special tests that we do, uh, and for a lot of the layout. So the the premise is: you go, you ride, you find these different points. Um, you Instagram us a picture of you and your teammates. When you get to those points, there's an uh, there's an award, uh, excuse me, a point system uh, that lets you rack up points. And by the end of the weekend, the team with the most points uh, wins the coveted Adventure Cup. And it is coveted, so much so- coveted. Sounds sort of like a scavenger hunt too, type of type of thing where you have to like. Take pictures and find it and send it in. And- exactly. Everything cool I just said you made sound weird because no. now it's a scavenger hunt. But, uh, <laughs> but, but yes. Uh, Way to go, it, Bobby. It's, I mean, it's, it's completely not like a scavenger hunt. Way no, cool. it sounds, like a, like, sounds a like a Sadie Hawkins dance. <laughs> yeah. Right, Corey? Sounds like the old sock hop. Imagine a geocache but with motorcycles. Mm. Um, that's really kind of the concept. Well, that so, sounds much cooler. Yeah, well, you know, my kid's a Boy Scout, so, you know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the idea behind it is very much um, to to just give an excuse to go out and ride and find things. And we try and do really historic stuff. I mean, things in in Gunnison, we go to Pie Town, which I know Cox would dig. Pie, um, pie, pie, a, not a, t- a town made of pies. <laughs> pie, pie. Um, uh, in the Sierras, Jeez. in the Sierras, we actually have several cool. Um, World War II era um, mm. crash sites. Um, a lot of the planes that were manufactured in Southern California, as they were being ferried up over the Sierras, went down in the 40s. And hmm. a lot of these sites like are, be that are things that you captain. can find. Um, so <laughs> you had to go and do that. Uh, so the, those are a lot of the points that we do is we try not just not just have an event with things to go see, but to also try and teach you some of the history of the area, mm-hmm. some of the cool points to go see. And, and again, it's just stuff that if we went up and did a ride on our own, um, we just go to the things that one of us knew about. This really gives you a chance to discover new things and, and, and find new areas. And I think the other thing that's interesting about it is that overall we include – it's an all-inclusive thing. You get your room. You get meals. Um, all of the different uh, stuff that goes around it as far as the, the navigation materials, all that sort of stuff. Um, we have some amazing uh, sponsors such as Climb, SBS, uh, Revit, EBC, Butler, Double Take, Scorpion. Um, and a title sponsor. Geico is our title Geico. sponsor. Uh, and then we also, you know, we, we've, got, we've got partners like Motion Pro, Continental Tires, folks like that that are, that are also a big part of um, bringing things in for the different participants to win for, for different things that they do. So uh, along with going and navigating to these different points, we also have special tests that we set up at the base location. And the idea behind the special tests is to allow um, folks to kind of practice their skills um, Ned's a Ned's a great coach. Ned does a really good job of, of helping teach teach guys how to how to take on things like riding in deep sand on a big adventure bike. Not an easy thing to do if you haven't tried it before. Uh, and so it creates an environment that lets them try things, lets them learn things. And these are all skills that directly transfer to what they're doing out on the trail later that day. Very cool. And uh, and I think one of the best parts of rides and stuff like this is just that that brotherhood or the the bonding you get where. You know, you get a group of people with all a lot of common interests coming together, and after the ride, you get to hang out and share a meal and share some stories, and, and that part's always a blast. For sure, I, I think uh, you know Cox alluded to the uh, the trek, which was a is an industry event, um, but we try and capture a lot of that sort of uh, evening thing, hanging out around the fire, getting to talk about the day's ride. Um, you know, when it comes to to the to getting uh, plastered, no, no, there's none of that. <laughs> Not uh, of this. I meant uh, that was uh, li- literally uh, plastered. Yeah, some home, and, home improvement, yeah, 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 which we did because yeah, it's exactly. a service organization. Exactly. As well. uh, but also the opportunity, I think, for the folks that participate to see what other folks are riding, to see the modifications that have been made, to, to just learn firsthand what all this stuff, different stuff is, and, and the reasons why, uh, is just a huge benefit. And I, the, the problem with these rides too is they're uh, they're addicting. Once you do one, I feel like uh, you got to keep doing them because you have so much fun, and you see them pop up again. You're like, oh, we got to go, and you recruit more people. Well, and, and actually, Bobby, that's exactly why uh, we've created this division I- I- at Bonnier is because you know we understand that if people don't have something to do with their motorcycle. Uh, it's really easy to, uh, to to let the bike sit, and mm-hmm. so you've got to have you've got to have reasons to ride. 
Um, it's the same reason why we're excited to see things like Moto America and the fact that now you've got this this series of races happening across the country. That's an excuse for a ride. I look at it and go, okay, now I've got a reason to ride up to Monterey this July. Um, you know, that's as an enthusiast, you need those sorts of things, um, or else suddenly it seems like you walk out to the garage and realize the the bike's been used to to dry towels for the last two months and the tires are flat. And what's the point of that? Can you help us out a little more? Maybe get a huge, massive thousands of people group and start so, riding the road, Atlanta. So now I, I, I <laughs> hey, he's, his other his other event kind of happens that way. Yeah, this is true. This is true. Uh, we 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 love, but uh, road. Yeah, boy, Southern California road Atlanta. That's kind of a kind of a haul. Well, it's going to put adventure right into adventure there. I'm just trying to think if there's a if, if there's a good <laughs> that ride. A, that would give an all new uh, and painful meeting to adventure riding. It which would. Is supposed it to wouldn't be fun. Indeed. It would indeed. I, I'm I'm going up to I'm going up in July. So you'll you'll at least get me uh, in in Monterey. All right, we'll take it. Corey Eastman joins us in studio, director of communications at Bonnier Motorcycle. Bonnier, Bonnier. Am I saying it right? I still feel like I'm saying it I wrong. How about the it I don't make it sound as good as you say. Well, as no, you but bon- Bonnier's the name. Bonnier. You're, you're insisting that we're French. That was the old company Bonnier. Year, years ago. Yeah, <laughs> now it's Bonner. <laughs> bon, Bon, Bon. See, it's not so easy, is it, Paul? <laughs> but, uh, it's that scavenger hunt company. Yeah. So, is, is there a uh, the scavenger hunt brand? Is is there, you know, a, a you have to be X, you know, a number of years or qualifications to, to be good enough to go on this ride, or is it? You not know, not at all. He's wondering can, if he can go. Basically, uh, can my scooter go can on the ride? Can he take his ruckus <laughs> for, and his sweater vest? We, 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 we sweater vest for sure. Uh, we're going to need to uh, to change the tires. No, the idea behind this is it's very adjustable. So of the eighty points that we laid out, um, we have a lot of them that you can actually you can get to that point purely on on street. So a lot of guys in these big bikes just aren't super comfortable going off road. Um, and so you can get to them. They're secondary roads. They're cobby asphalt, but they're they're asphalt that's really fun to ride on these bikes. Mm-hmm. Um, so those are kind of all of our our, uh, our black points on the map are that. Our blue points, um, just like a ski run, are mm-hmm. more of a medium. So that means a, a fire road, a two-track road, something, again, that's very, very accessible, very easy off-road. And then we have, uh, I'm sorry, the, the green dots, the blues are the mediums, greens are the easy, and then black dots or black diamonds are more single track or Jeep trail, that sort of thing. So we just, since we're doing these in ski locations, we just copied what they do on ski slopes. Hmm. Um, and that really allows you to adjust for any level rider that you are. Uh, even from a bike standpoint, we've had shorter stature people ride it on 250 dual sports. And, of course, we have a, a ton of folks doing it on you know big 1,200 GSs and that sort of thing. Paul, see that? There's something for You're everybody. In. Yeah, Paul, they're, they're thinking of us. You're in. Yeah. You know, Bobby's cute as a bug's ear, and, you know, those big adventure bikes are, <laughs> cute are accommodating for, uh, you know, for for two up, you know, for passengers. So, hmm? Bobby, you might even so, Me, find so, a big so, strap of so, adventure <laughs> rider that you could uh, maybe maybe with. Maybe Cox will take you along. Ooh. I've got a 990. He can fit back there. <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> well, if you got questions for Corey or want more information about the ride, great time to give us a call, 877-792-1090 and 858-457-1090. we got to take one quick break, but uh, let's uh, give a special shout-out once again, our good friends at Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys, keeping everybody safe with those helpful riding hints. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys have been representing riders for decades, and here's Chuck Coro from Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys to provide you with a helpful riding hint. Before you begin a lane change, you should always look over your shoulder to clear your blind spot and signal. But in California, it is an absolute must because a motorcycle has a legal right to share the lane. You should also check your mirrors every three to five seconds to see what's coming. If a motorcycle is coming through, move over and give the rider some room. This helpful hint has been brought to you by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys at 1-800-4-BIKERS or online at russbrown.com. The negotiation begins the minute you walk in the door, Frank. Jerry, I'm going to Toyota Carlsbad for my new Toyota. I don't have to worry. No, if... brother, walk in with that attitude. You're dead meat. Yeah, I don't think that's First the First thing when you walk in, what? walk out. Jerry, You look... come back the next day, just walk right in, walk right out. <sighs> look, come back a week later, look him right in the eye and say... I'd like to buy a car. No, walk out. Jerry, does this explain why you don't own a car? You made me forget, was I in or out? You're out. This spring, hop in and save on a huge selection of new and used Toyotas. Toyota Carlsbad. Here's an idea. Bear with me. You could save quite a bit of money just by switching your motorcycle insurance to Geico. Piles of it, in fact. But there may not be a lot of room on your bike for all that extra cash. So I had somewhat of an idea. You could get one of those nifty little sidecars, pile it up with all that money you've just saved, and merrily drive on your way. It's just a thought. Just off the top of my head. 
Call GEICO today for a free motorcycle rate quote. GEICO, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys are the real deal. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. Their entire practice is dedicated to representing motorcyclists. As riders themselves, they understand why you ride, the issues you face, and the motorcycle culture. For over 30 years, Russ Brown and his partner Chuck Coro have been helping injured motorcyclists and their families get the care and compensation they deserve. Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys also created BAM. BAM. A nationwide buddy system of over 2 million riders helping riders in the event of a roadside emergency. BAM offers free legal advice, and thanks to Russ Brown, they have staff on hand to take your call 24-7, 365 days a year. Imagine a real person answering the phone 24-7. Just call 1-800-4-BIKERS for more information and to get your BAM card today. If you go down, call Russ Brown, 1-800-4-BIKERS, and online at russbrown.com. This is Bike Week Radio Show with Bobby Wooldridge, Brock Glover, and Paul Carruthers on San Diego's sports leader, the mighty 1090. Welcome back, Bike Week Radio Show, San Diego sports leader, the mighty 1090. And I uh, just got an email from Epic Phil Cotner, the mastermind behind that Bike Week radio show smartphone app. And I have a text here, by the way, guys, from uh, our friend Mark Tomey. He's up in, where is Mark? Paul, isn't he up in, like, South Dakota? Mark, yeah, but where I think, are you? I think text he's, me. He's moved back to Southern California. Are you back in SoCal now? Yeah, I, know I don't know if he's here he's yet, but I know. Anyway, he said, listen to the live show now. Curious to hear a mini discussion on what, what our opinions are of the new Honda Bulldog. I personally like it. But I know it's it's a love hate thing. People have just lambasted this thing. But I like kind of quirky, interesting, weird kind of motorcycles. What do you think, Corey? I, I agree. I mean, I, I I like anything that that takes a little bit of a chance. I mean, it's uh, it's so nice, especially when we see it from manufacturers that can sometimes be a bit conservative. Um, I just like trying something different. And and honestly, looking at the concept, I mean, it's it's not about how fast you can go on the thing, but you can go anywhere. Um, when I first and, saw and it, it reminded cool it reminded me of. Uh, Full disclosure: I loved Gumby and Pokey as a kid and as an adult. But yeah, it reminded that, I'm me just of, looking at it now. It it's... reminded me of something that the bad guys, the blockhead guys, would chase uh, <laughs> Gumby on. Gumby and Pokey would be escaping from. I'm 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 not sure if you ride that thing around, you're going to get much Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? But that's just my personal opinion. (laughs) You know, we're going to ask our listeners, what do you think of the new Honda Bulldog concept? (laughs) I think uh, Bike Week Radio Show might be a little too... uh PG-13 rated for the the morning show. Yeah, the 9 to 10 slot. We might have to be 9 to 10 p.m. pretty soon with Paul Carruthers around here. the low seat height, high gas tank height look. Well, but... I like all the scrambler type motorcycles that are coming out. I mean, I know I'm an off road guy and a trail rider and all that sort of stuff. And and it's but you a, can't ignore the scrambler ter- uh, category, right? And it, but to, to me, I mean, let, let's face it. I mean, we've all ridden the modern dual sports and that sort of stuff. I mean, they're so good, but you just you can carry so much speed. I, I kind of like stuff that sort of makes us slow down a little bit. Right. I mean, it's, it's it's sort of nice to be able to say, okay, well, let's just go up to this fire tower or this cool location and. And just sort of hang, and and you know a bike like that. I'm guessing you can slide it fairly easily. And um, I know, you know, my time at Husqvarna, we introduced a, a, a low dual sport. Um, and one of the things that all of us sort of forgot about was how much fun it is to slide stuff because when you lower a bike, it slides really, really well, as you see in flat track bikes. Yes. Um, and so that you know, there's I, I think there's all sorts of silliness you could do with that thing if you uh, if you gave yourself the opportunity. Hey, tell us about the hot bike tour. Uh, hot bike tour. It's uh, it's it's another event that uh, our friends at Geico have uh, have gotten behind. Um, so our V twin brands um, are are very much about the hands on. It's it, it's they're very much uh, brands that that talk about and and walk our readers through um, everything from engine to uh, engine modifications, engines rebuilds to suspension and chassis um, to full on custom builds. And so as we talked about what's a what's an event that would fit that. Um, there's plenty of, of incredible rallies and, and static shows that you can go to. So what we really wanted to do was create something that got folks out and gave folks a good reason to go ride their motorcycle. So the Hot Bike Tour um, 
as the name implies, it's a tour. We ride for five different days. Each day, um, there's a bike show. Each day, there's a uh, there's there's bands. There's um, a lot of times we're in downtown areas in like Mitchell, South Dakota. Where, or yeah, uh, Mitchell, South Dakota will be in a downtown. Um, in Rapid City will be downtown. Sheridan will be downtown. Billings will be downtown. Spirit Lake, we're actually starting at the Victory Motorcycle Factory. So we're going to do factory tours. Uh, and to me, the really cool element is that we've also gotten uh, many of today's top builders to, uh, to come do our, our build-off challenge. Uh, and so literally these guys are building motorcycles and then riding them all five days with us with a People's, jo- People's Choice contest each evening um, with the overall vote-getter. Um, being being the folks that, that's that's crowned the uh, the grand champion of the event, and there's a build off for hot bike and a build off for baggers. So, um, you know that element of just really proving that your creation doesn't just look good, but but you can get out and ride it. So last year you told me kind of a funny story. Um, you know you're starting this thing, and I, I forget which city you were coming into, but you had your group of guys that had ridden a day or two with you, and, and you arrive and you, you arrived a city that apparently has double sold. You know, you, you're, you're getting madder and madder as you're trying to get into this little town, and it's packed with people. You're going, they're putting on an event right on top of my event. Well, it, yeah, J- Jefferson City. It's, it's a great little city um, in Missouri, and it, it's, it's, it's a wonderful town. They've got this great old prison from the 1800s that is actually right Unless by you're a downtown. great old prisoner there. Uh, <laughs> it's just it, – it's a neat place. And, and, and exactly as, as Scott was saying, I mean, when we pulled into town, I mean, it was just, you know, elbow to elbow with folks in Main Street, in, in Main Street downtown – um, and I thought for sure there must be something else going on, but it's just this community came out. And to me, that's what's kind of fun about the Hot Bike Tour is that we're not taking it to major markets. We're not trying to be, um, you know, another bike event in downtown San Diego or Los Angeles or Chicago or something like that. So we chose these cities on purpose. Um, you know, uh, Mitchell, South Dakota, home of the world famous Corn Palace. Um, Paul, I know you've been there. Um, you know, that, that's that's the sort of thing that that's the perfect town for us. It's got a really cool downtown. Uh, Brian Clock, one of our one of our custom builders, it's his hometown. We happen to be there on his birthday. Um, you know, it's a, it's a town of 15,000 people, and all 15,000 are going to come out, as well as everyone from the surrounding area is going to ride in um, and be part of it. The other thing I like about these areas that we go to is that, yes, our, our basic premise is American V-Twin motorcycles, but if you're in those areas, if you're a moto kid, if you're a sport bike, track day junkie, um, you know, it's going to be the biggest motorcycle event going on. So we see that we get just motorcycle enthusiasts from around coming out to enjoy the evening. Um, and that's the part I really like is, is again, that whole, that whole concept when we go back to our key mission, what I'm at Bonder to do is give folks a reason to ride, and it does just that. So how many riders do you expect this year? I mean, you'll start with a group. I mean, what can if, if somebody shows up there in Spirit Lake, how many of you guys will start we're, day one? We're, we're trending towards having 500 people that will ride all five days. Um, wow. So that's 500 bikes doing all five days. That's the 28 builders that we have. That's our staff. That's some folks from Victory that are joining us, all that good stuff. Um, we'll have 30,000 people come to the event um, throughout the week. Um, so every evening we're looking at – um, five to ten thousand people that show up um, for the concerts, that show up to check out the the vendors, um, the food, and all the different stuff like that that we have. Um, so you know, it, it's it's uh, it's significant and it's fun because it does grow and you sort of feel the enthusiasm as we move forward. Um, you know, from town to town, uh, the the night it starts on a Wednesday. Um, so the 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 weekday activities we start the show later in the evening. So it's the kind of thing where if you are in the area. You can uh, you can go to work, ride your bike to work that day, then show up that evening for a fun evening, uh, and then when we get to the weekend events, um, we start at more midday so that people have a chance to uh, to be involved. And one of the elements that we're adding this year to it is that the bike builders actually brought it up that not only do they want to ride the event on the last day, they want to drag race each other and see who has the fastest motorcycle. So um, that I think is a pretty cool element. Um, all these guys on their custom bikes after riding five days are going to square off at an eighth mile drag strip in Billings uh, awesome. and find find out who who. who Who's got the quickest motorcycle? So uh, it's all just going to be a really fun attitude, really, really good to hang out with. Corey's the, you know, he, he you're he, he's he, just nothing but fun. Everything he does, I call him up during the week. What are you working on? Well, I got this event there. He's designing this event. He's got this tour, and uh, you talk about a guy that's in the perfect position for for what he does. He needs a reality show. That's what you I know. That's not a bad <laughs> idea. You could do the Adventure Rider Rally Hot Bike Tour. How about the Bonnier? I mean, think of all the titles. You've got how many titles now under the roof just in the motorcycle category for Bonnier? Oh, 
you're going to make me count them, aren't you? Uh, we, we, Ballpark yeah, a lot. Yeah, a we, dozen. We, yeah, yeah. We've 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 got over over ten media brands, and honestly, that's what's so much fun. I mean, Paul knows he's at our office uh, fairly regularly. Um, I just, saw him there. Just the personalities that you get when you walk around that building. Um, you know, when you're over with the Dirt Rider crew, and three and, quarters of them work for me. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> at well, one yeah. point or another. Yeah, it feels like a reunion every Paul, time I go in there. Paul actually, yeah. I mean, Paul actually had sort of a, a trade school for for budding moto journalists. So um, that's true. I think almost everybody in the building. Is that has, the Columbia School of Journalism? Oh, the Carruthers School of Journalism. The Carruthers School yeah, of Journalism. I remember yes. that. There should be a medal. Um, but no, I mean that's what's so fun about being in that building is that the amount of different personalities that you get. Um, when you're talking to the dirt rider guys, when you're talking to the sport rider guys, um, you know the motorcyclist and, and the cycle world guys that have such a, a broad coverage and a broad perspective. Um, you know, it, it's just really fun to hang out there. Um, conversations like things like the bulldog, or you know, the state of scramblers, or where adventure bikes are going next. Um, it's always a good conversation. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be invited by Dirt Rider to go out and ride some of the new 250s uh, a week or so ago. Um, in, in a category like that, that as a, as a general enthusiast who is a fairly large man, I don't normally think about 250s, but getting to go and, and be part of that and, and listen to these great testers and great riders have that conversation and see, see all the, the neat product that consumers are getting a chance to choose on is just really, really fun. And, and that building is just fun for that. Let's, uh, Speaking of scramblers, yes, indeed. Let's uh, got a caller on the line. Check in with Dave. Dave, how are we doing? Hey, pretty good, guys. How are you about yourselves this morning? Good, Dave from from Cerberus Motorcycles in San Diego, and um, Dave, you and I have been trading a couple of little texts here. You're rocking the Cerberus and, uh, you know T-shirt what? right now. It looks you good. Know. Truth be told, I'm wearing your T-shirt here because it's one of my favorites. <laughs> awesome. But uh, you know, I saw you at the Del Mar Short Track just a few weeks ago, and we we're you had some some cool. Uh, motorcycles on display that you guys have designed. Tell us about those bikes, and, and you're calling because I encourage you to call in. Let's talk scramblers for a little bit. Well, that, that, at the Del Mar Flat Track races, we had just finished two bikes. Um, one of them is more of a of a little bobber cafe racer thing, but the other one that got a lot of attention was our little CL350 scrambler that was completely rebuilt and mildly customized. Uh, I was amazed that... Um, it was so well received because it's nothing really custom. Uh, we did a few things to it, changed the color up. What did it start uh, its it, life as? So when it rolled into your shop in whatever condition it was in, what was it originally? Uh, it came in in boxes. In boxes. It was yeah. It was old, boxed up, um, in pieces, and uh, we went through it and completely redid it. But uh, the the big. The telling thing about the industry right now, I think, is that people are really starting to go towards the smaller displacement bikes. And you've been uh, you've been in business there. Give us your address again. I'm showing Corey Eastman, our guest here, I'm, and we're going through your Facebook page, uh, Cerberus. Uh, it's um, down in uh, City Heights on the corner of University and, and Euclid, 3889 Euclid. In an amazing and iconic uh Building the, for, for the San old Diego garage building. people like yeah, myself. It's yeah, it's a great, great looking shop. Very cool. Yeah, and uh, just for our, our listeners that may not be familiar with you, give us an idea about what Cerberus Motorcycles is all about. Well, we started out doing you know uh, service work and, and mild customization on older bikes that nobody else will work on, especially the dealerships, and uh, that turned into building full on you know complete custom rebuilds and restorations. But since we've moved into the Egyptian garage, uh, half of the shop is actually a, a co-op of sorts where you can come and pay a membership fee and work on your own bike in a, in a safe, supervised atmosphere with the specialty tools that you may or may not have um, and other people to help with ideas and advice and and stuff. It's it's a lot of fun. We've, we've built uh, quite a community of different types of people. We've got one one of our members has a 1950 BSA, uh, and then we've got a couple guys with newer uh, BMWs and like an FZ01, too. Yeah, and I was there doing a photo shoot with, uh, with Malty Lass and the, the guys from NuViz, and I was impressed because I'd not seen a, a situation like yours where somebody who doesn't have garage space, doesn't have tools, and, and, you know, these days probably so many people riding that would like to know how to wrench on a motorcycle or just do basic maintenance on a motorcycle. I mean, you're providing well, especially, especially in the, in the 
community that that frequents you know this part of town and actually in most big cities these kind of neighborhoods like we live in here uh a lot of these guys are riding older bikes they don't have any anybody to take them to uh, a lot of dealerships just shy away from anything that's over you know five ten years old so they need to know how to work on them they need to know how the bike works and in our experience it helps a lot with these kids I use the term kid loosely. Um, when they know how the bike works, when they know how to work on it themselves, they stick with it a lot longer instead of it just being, you know, a fad. They actually get into it and it becomes something that they do, like a lot of us older people that have been riding for years. We love it, and this really gets people involved. Dave, uh, Corey Eastman here talked about he touched on the, the Ducati scramblers, you know, from the whole sc- scrambler category. Ducati certainly has come on strong. And if if nothing else, they're recognizing and identifying the fact that the scrambler category is a pretty hot category. What What is your thought about the new line of Ducati scramblers in particular? Um, I think that, you know, Ducati has, has gone back, you know, it's, and it's one of those one of those industry things that's interesting, it either works or it doesn't work, uh, with going back to the retro roots type of thing of any given company. Uh, the Ducati Scrambler, they recognized they needed a smaller, maybe cheaper bike, and I think they picked one of the best vintage Ducatis to base that thing off of. I've actually got a 450 Jupiter here that we're restoring, and uh, the the man who owns the, the 450 Ducati, he wanted to cafe it. And we're in the middle of, you know, powder coating and rebuilding the motor, powder coating the frame and rebuilding the motor, and that new Ducati Scrambler comes out. And he's like, oh, no, let's just redo the bike. Dave, we're going to uh, have to have you in studio with us. I mean, we, there are a lot of topics we'd love to discuss with you. Corey's hot to come and visit your, your shop, so we'll be down there in the next few weeks, but that was Dave. Well, just, just to let you know on that, we're doing a Moto Monday tomorrow, uh, right. the big one at the end of the month. Appreciate it, man. But uh, thanks thanks for calling in. We'll come down and visit you real soon. That's Cerberus Motorcycles in San Diego, 3889 Euclid Avenue. Thank you, Dave. Be good to see you guys. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. And one last mention for our friend Scott Wallenberg, the uh, maestro of our Bike Week Radio Show in-studio band. Um, I'm going to be up there in Boise, Idaho with Scott and the rest of the great people. Oh, lucky the, you. Uh, the Racer X Interam in Boise, April 11th and 12th. We'll be doing some interviews there. With uh, notables such as Pierre Carsmakers, Lars Larson, Chuck Sun, and Scott Wallenberg, and Tim Kennedy, and, and uh, Terry and the boys from Boise Vintage Cycle. It's an amazing event. I was there last year with those guys. Lyle Lovett came, rode a few laps, and uh, made some people happy. And, um, really looking forward to it. So shout out to Scott. I know he's listening to us right now. And uh, guys, Corey, thanks for joining us. Corey, fantastic work out of you, my friend. Welcome anytime in studio. I mean, I know this isn't as fun as doing your normal stuff uh, you're doing, but, uh, you know, There's, a, there's you. an element of adventure. Look at uh, the donuts. Uh, yeah. a- absolutely. You, you feed us well. That's that's all it takes. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thanks again to Paul Carruthers. And, ooh, BikeWeekRadioShow.com. If you head there, we got a poll up right now. Who was your favorite Bike Week Radio Show guest? Who was that? Corey Eastman's in the running now. Bingo, bingo. Thank goodness. Thank and you. lastly, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't give a big big shout out to geico thank you so much for uh your third season of uh of that warm embrace for bike week radio show they've been on air with us since day one bobby's holding the geico gecko right now Heck careful yeah. bobby he needs more air than that but uh <laughs> thank you um and guys it's been another fun it's been another slice as they say Indeed. If you missed any of the show, head to BikeWeekRadioShow.com or check out the podcast on iTunes or through that Bike Week Radio Show smartphone app. We'll be back next Sunday right here. San Diego Sports Leader, the Mighty 1090. You've been listening.